Day 653. Today the biggest news comes from the Kherson region. Here, Ukrainian activities started posing a significant threat to Russian objectives, which is why Russians gathered their forces and attempted to undercut Ukrainian forces from the southwest. According to Russian sources, Ukrainians conducted a series of offensive actions in the forest and started building formidable defenses. Ukrainian sources claim that Ukrainians entrenched long ago. It's just that recently Russians discovered that Ukrainians were rapidly improving the captured trenches and fortifications, which made Russians quite concerned. In fact, Russian forces found it so difficult to dislodge Ukrainian marines from their positions that it was decided to use a new tactic. Based on the geolocated footage, Russian forces conducted an attack from the western edge of the forest that is not under Ukrainian control and tried to advance towards the central part of the settlement, thereby slowly putting Ukrainian marines in the forest into a pocket. The main idea was not to establish firm control over this part of the settlement, but rather create a threat of encirclement by undercutting Ukrainians from the southwest in hopes of forcing Ukrainians to retreat. If Ukrainians retreated, Russians would be able to assume control over these crucial strong points in the forest and use them against Ukrainians. The operation started with an extensive bombardment to force Ukrainians who were holding positions inside the settlement to flee back to the islands, thereby opening the ground for the Russian attack. Unfortunately for Russians, this did not change the situation a lot because the settlement is very narrow, more precisely around 350 meters, which is why Ukrainians do not need to maintain a permanent presence in the ruins in the first place. Some Russian analysts claim that Ukrainians are located in the forest or dense tree areas immediately in front and behind the settlement, and the ground is under constant supervision of drones. So when Russians launch an attack, Ukrainian drone pilots usually spot them on the approach, and Ukrainian marines advance inside the settlement to meet the Russian assault groups. That is why all engagements here are always characterized by both parties as meeting engagements. And this is exactly what happened after the artillery preparation. The moment Russian forces started attempting to enter the village, Ukrainians were already ready to meet them. The footage shows that Russians tried to suppress Ukrainian fire to no avail and then made an attempt to change their positions, but unsuccessfully. As a result, a lot of Russian soldiers died, while a few were seen fleeing the area. Russian sources released a video showing how a small group tried to outflank Ukrainians and fired with RPG, however this did not help. Ukrainian fighters also previously released a video confirming that the forest line is also under tight control of Ukrainian snipers. The snipers were eliminating Russian reconnaissance units that were trying to identify Ukrainian firing points prior to the main attack. Interestingly, geolocated footage of the last attack also indicates that Russians did not receive the necessary fire support. As it turned out, the Russian artillery crews got into trouble during the artillery preparation, as the Ukrainians immediately initiated a counter-battery battle. Footage released by the Ukrainian side reveals that Ukrainians successfully destroyed several pieces of equipment, while highly likely forcing other units to busy themselves with the change of location instead of helping the units on the ground. Moreover, today the commander of the famous Magyarsburg detachment posted a video showing how his units demolished multiple pieces of heavy equipment in the forest that Russians were carefully preparing for the main assault. The first armored fighting vehicle was spotted by the drone with a thermal camera shortly after the vehicle was parked. The vehicle was promptly destroyed by the so-called Baba Yaga drones that carry at least three heavy mines. Madyar also said that his units are using drones to distantly mine certain areas, especially intersections. As a result, they managed to immobilize three more Russian armored fighting vehicles. Due to the limited visibility, they simply cannot notice mines on the corners and are easily trapped. As the vehicles cannot be evacuated quickly, Ukrainians usually have more than enough time to send Baba Yagas to finish the job. Because Russians were preparing to use these vehicles for an assault, they were fully loaded with ammo, which resulted in a powerful detonation that tore the vehicle to pieces. This morning, Ukrainian drone pilots also noticed how a new Russian armored fighting vehicle was driving through the region. They had already started to organize an interception when the vehicle got stuck. 
While Madar's detachment was sending a kamikaze drone, Ukrainian marines hit the vehicle with an ATGM, causing a powerful detonation. So the Russian attack largely failed, not only because of the effective counter-battery fire and dynamic defense structure, but also because of the insanely high efficiency of the Ukrainian drone operators that detected and destroyed all Russian equipment that was prepared for the assault. In light of the Christmas season, we decided to put on sale our solidarity collection with dual flags. Right now you can get our products with dual flags at substantial 20-30% discounts. If you would like to show your solidarity with our dual flags and support my work, now is an ideal opportunity to make a purchase. So check out the link in the description, find the flag of your country and take advantage of this offer before it expires. Your support is greatly appreciated.